Okay. We're live. Hi, everybody. This is Hampton hey. and Sharon. How you doing, folks? Hope everything is well. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, let's pray. Lord God, once again, we have the opportunity to give some information that we have learned from you, Lord, of how we should take care, how we could take care of each other, how we should take care of each other, what to expect, what not to expect, all the ups and downs that we've, we've gone through, Lord, we hope to share them with our family and friends. So we pray, Father God, that we'll be a blessing to somebody this day, if to no one else, to each other. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 I'm glad to be with you all. Let me turn the light here so y'all can see him. <laughs> Let me help you out some. Okay. All righty. Um, tonight, we're going to be talking about uh, the goals and aspirations of the caregiver spouse. Now, I have to use have a disclaimer because what I, I don't want um, to happen is for uh, people who are watching to think that um, the uh, caregiver spouse, that this is only for those who are caregivers of a spouse. This is for caregivers uh, in general. Mm -hmm. And um, because uh, I was a caregiver of an aunt and a grandmother and, uh, before I became the um, caregiver of my spouse. And so uh, we, we have all those, um, those facets of what we're bringing to you and kind of centered in on my my position right now mm -hmm. as a caregiver spouse. However, um, everything that I'm telling you about uh, being the caregiver of a spouse, or as Hamp tells you, as being the care partner of a, of a caregiver spouse, then um, uh, you you can take that in and adjust it for your own situation. Really, it it, it really doesn't um, make a difference. It doesn't. The only difference is. That, oh, well, I'm not going to say that. Anyway, okay. <laughs> uh, this is rated G. Is it pastor watching? I don't know. I can't tell. Okay. Um, but uh, one of the things I want to uh, do is, is, are we on there I can't find it. I can't it's not popping up yet. It should be on there. It should be right there. You just did that. Right there. Click that. Mm -hmm. There you go. We're on. Huh? Mm -hmm. we don't want to get there. there you go. Turn the sound around. You know how that does. Okay. I did that already. Okay. Um, next, uh, I was just talking to my um, to our daughter, and uh, and what I was uh, she asked me. She said she was on her way home. She normally calls me when she's on her way home. She has something in school late tonight, and so she says, "Well, what are you all talking about tonight?" I said, well, "We're actually talking about when I said about um, uh, the." Um, the aspirations of a caregiver spouse and you know did we really is this what we really signed up for when we said um for better or for, or better or for worse in sickness and health no, poor, yeah. no this was in sickness and the health that's the part i'm zeroing in oh, on okay. mm. and i said i've often said that to your dad and he swears this is what he signed up for i said this is not what i signed up for this is not i didn't i did not know any of this would would ever happen well, um, I didn't know that either, but I, I, I knew it was a possibility that it could happen. I never thought about this type of scenario where I would actually be this uh, into this depth of being in the caregiving situation. There was nobody in my family um, Up to that point. 75 yeah. years, it was 60, 70 married? years ago. Yeah, when we got married, when yeah. I was a teenager, nobody um, but was I knew old what like that. But I that meant when they said in sickness and health. I did not know that's what this meant. And, and and I did not know that it that it meant uh, the level of care that I would have to give somebody. I, I was used to, as I said, um, uh, listen, what I had written down here that um, the uh, common goal of every caregiver is to see their care partner through the illness and back to health. That's what I was thinking, that if it took, you know, five or six years to get to that point, then fine, you know. And, um, and that is the sickness and the health that we promised at the altar, that we wanted to nurse our, our spouses back to health. There was no a scenario that I knew of, because I never it, it even thought about that, where um, you would be someone's caregiver for 20 years. 50 years ago, 
nobody lived long enough to be somebody's care need, need you know caregiver for, for 50 years i mean 20 years because they you they die they normally die but now we have medicines and and uh, medical um um techniques Experience. and oh. and doctors and a new technology that can extend um the life of our care partners uh, for 20 30 years or more and uh and so that is not what i signed up for now having said that um would i had i known all this would come if i could look down the lord and lord said now sharon this is what you signed up for because uh, that young uh, man you got he's gonna wear out and this is what you're gonna be left with would i have said i don't want that no i would not i would if i had known that this is what i was in for I would not have said, I don't want that. Uh, no, you, you can get him somebody else. I, I would have passed. I know. I would not have done that. I still. <laughs> what are you doing? What are you, for lightning? Go ahead. Oh. Anyway. Because he's he's he was such a one. I knew him for five years. And he was such a wonderful, wonderful person then. That, you know, even knowing that down the road, something like that might or something like this would happen i still would have bought into it i still would have said yes at the altar if, if, the, if the pastor has oh you came back yeah mm -hmm. okay if the pastor had said this is what you're signing up for it we're not talking about running noses and, and and throwing up every now and then or even having the runs you know we, we're not talking about that we're not talking about breaking an arm or leg and you got to, no, no we're not we're talking about for the rest of your life maybe starting when you're 30 for the rest of your life maybe starting when you're 25 for the rest of your life and that is not what we're looking for and and a lot of people a lot of people don't see that and uh i know you took care of me when i was 22 years old and he did he took excellent care of me when i was 22 years old but there was a beginning and a foreseeable end to that it wouldn't matter sharon i it wouldn't matter baby okay well okay yeah all right we say that but uh, yeah, I, I look at that. I said, we say that. Did I say we said that? Yeah, you said okay. we. He says that. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, uh, it, at, at some point, um, I, I, I just see, I just being honest that this is not what I signed up for. But I would not have it any other way. I've, I've grown. We have become so close. And I, I wouldn't have seen that. If somebody told me how close you could become to somebody taking care of them like this. And, um that the, the fall in love with you all over again. You're not the same man I married. I wouldn't want that man again. I, I like this right here. Cause that one I had 55 years ago, he wouldn't let me take care of him and, and care for him and, and love on him and, and, and do all, you know, he would not, he, no. He'd be too busy trying to, you know, getting his GTO or his uh, road runner and running after his buddies and going to play ball, riding. No, but now I got you all to myself. Yes. You are so selfish. I know. I am. I am. Yes. Me. Yes, I am. You love it. This don't don't be don't try to pretend that you're not. Okay. Um, uh, the caregiver um tips we're giving you um is that these goals and tips and discussions are not only valuable for caregiver spouses, they are also valuable tools for all caregivers and their partners. Um, they will have to be adapted. Those these things we're talking about as necessary for each caregiver and care partner. No two situations are the same, and what works for the one caregiver and or partner may not work that at all true. in your situation. Yes, yes. and we have to be aware of that. It may not work. What works for Hamp and I may not work at all for you and your care partner at all. It may be a total disaster. It may. It, Give up something else. And I, I'm in this um, this class now called the Savvy uh, Caregiver. I don't think I have my book here. I don't see it. I think it's over here. That's it. Yeah, that's it. It's called the Sa Savvy Caregiver. Um, my sister always sends me um, stuff for about caregiving. And this is the latest um, seminar of, I'm in now. It's called the um, Savvy Caregiver. And it's given by... Um, you know, I don't know who it's given by. I have no clue. It's, it's in Maryland. But um, I don't think you have to be in Maryland to take us. Here we are in South Carolina, and one of the presenters is in Florida. So I don't I don't know. But it is. But the, all the information they give us is about Maryland. And uh, this particular one is about um, dementia and Alzheimer's. And um, I'm finding out 
wonderful information and I pass this on to uh, some friends of ours that I know who are in the situation where their care partner, their spouse, or a, or a mother, a parent, or um, or uh, a friend is uh, has to deal with is dealing with Alzheimer's and or dementia, mm -hmm. and I, I've talked to people whose um, care partner has both, and you can have both. You can have dementia and Alzheimer's at the same time, and uh, I, I have to ask. I'm gonna ask this my question next week when I go uh, when I have this class is how they determine. Well, you actually have to be diagnosed, you know, to find out which one you have. But I was wondering how the manifestations of that is different. But I'll, 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 I'll find that out. Um, we are uh, so used to the experience um, of a care partner coming down with something, um, looks for uh, looking for the signs like the runny nose, like I said, a fever. Uh, the illness is in the stage where all the symptoms um, may begin to take over, where they just feel miserable. All you want to do is roll up in a blanket. And um, that's the busiest time for the caregiver is to try to take care of their care partner when they're at that, that position. What are you looking at, honey? I'm reading this thing. Oh, don't worry about that. That's why. Yeah. I, oh, we, we forgot to tell them why we're taking, um, doing both. Don't forget to do that this time. Okay. Um, and uh, th at some point, the care partner begins to get better. Uh, the symptoms t start to subside, and they start to feel better. And that is when the care partners, um, the caregivers' um, duties are least. And it's, and even once they get better, you may still have a few things that you need to follow through. And they may feel a little weak, and you have to ask the effects of a bad cold or COVID or some other uh, illness. And um, at, eventually, that just kind of goes away. Uh, this is not the scenario for a current partner with a chronic illness or incapacitation. For example, someone who's had a stroke, uh, amputee, Alzheimer's, or dementia, or some other debilitating chronic disease, uh, kidney disease that continues to um, go down, to spiral downward. So all of these things are um, diseases and conditions that uh, don't get better. And they may stabilize for a while, but eventually they'll get even um, uh, worse like that. Yes. Yeah. So, um, no matter how well I take care of my husband, he will never be healed. He won't. He'll never be healed. He'll never um, be um, get better or be free of his disability or the effects of his illnesses or um, help him regain his healthy state the day it was before he became ill or lost his arm. He will never get better. Okay, this is our new reality. And he, we have learned to love it. In fact, one day uh, you walked up on me and I turned around and I, I think I was looking at you in the mirror or something and it looked like he had a, a left arm. <laughs> <laughs> and I jumped straight up because I didn't recognize that silhouette. Won't he do it? <laughs> <laughs> and it shocked me. I was, it, it scared me to death because I, I think I must have been in front of the, a monitor or something and it was, and you see kind of backwards when you're on, on the screen. Like right now, I'm looking at my phone and I'm looking on the computer and I got this hand up in, uh, in the uh, computer and it looks the opposite from what it is on my monitor. Um, on my phone, and I, again, we're, we're taping, um, we're, we're taking the video t on my phone too, and so you know, it, it's very easy for him to walk up, and I'm thinking I'm looking at the other arm. Anyway, that's what happened. Oh, by the way, before I forget, we're taking, um, we're doing a video on the phone as well as on the computer because the um, the what's it called? The, quality. the the frame rate is so low on my computer, and the um, uh, that uh, we're not able to get a really good picture. Yeah, it gets and, uh, it looks it, fuzzy. It looks fuzzy and wrinkly stuff like that. So, and I like to, I want to put them all on YouTube, and the quality isn't good enough to really go. It's a mess to go on YouTube. So, um, my son uh, suggested that we go ahead and um, go ahead and decide uh, and then tape it on the phone and then transfer that to YouTube. So I've got the one from last week and I got this one. I'm gonna go ahead and, and start um, pulling those over like that. And this only yeah, I don't know. Will it ever get better when he gets when we get back home? Oh yeah, yeah. Because it's faster. This right here is yeah. Oh yeah, that's yeah, right. Yeah, this, yeah, that. this is that, not yeah. good at all. Mm -mm, no. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, my uh care 
Uh, my caregiver uh, and me as a caregiver can only hope to slow down the progression of Hamp's chronic illnesses. And that's my goal as a caregiver, is to slow down and or stabilize Hampton's uh, illnesses. Also my goal as a care spouse, a caregiver spouse and caregiver is to make sure I stay as healthy as possible. I was looking through my, my book and studying, uh, oh. well, for that um, this class I'm taking. And yeah. uh, one of the things I saw, uh, let's see, what page is that on? Um, the, the note that said about 70% yeah, of the time. Oh yeah, it says, uh, Caregivers have a 63% higher mortality rate than non-caregivers. Mm -hmm. And so you uh, kill yourself by taking care of me. Right. Uh -huh. Well, that's not. I mean, that's you know, I can take those off. But then it says, uh, caregivers who are 70 years older, 70 uh -huh. or older, only survive uh, uh, by 30%. Uh, 70% of caregivers who are 70 years and older will die before they care partners. 70%. Mm -hmm. That rate actually increases if the care partner, I mean caregiver, is also ill. So if I have an illness, that 70% could go up as high as 80% if I'm also sick, trying to be his caregiver. Mm -hmm. So yes, it is so important to make sure that caregivers you take care of, of yourself. yourself. Yeah. And you need to take care of yourself first. Your 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 just like they do on the airplane. Just like they do on the you airplane. Put the oxygen mask absolutely, on yourself first. absolutely, absolutely. And uh, and 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 care and taking care of myself first does not mean as I learned this in this class does not mean that if you got a spare moment that you go oh I can I can go put the clothes in the washing machine or or I can you know go and take the trash out. That that's not what it means. It means that when you sit and do something mindless. You sit and someone does something for you. When you go and get your nails done, get your hair done, you go walk around um, the uh, department store and window shop. Remember when people used to win? Nobody window shops anymore. Window shop online on, on the computer, you know. And you go window shop. Go go um. And if you like to garden, walk through through the garden center and, and look at the pretty flowers, something like that. I love perfumes. Everybody knows I love perfumes. I'm I'm gonna the next chance I get. I'm gonna say I'm gonna go tomorrow. Is go down to um, Macy's or um, Nordstrom and smell all their expensive perfume. I'm not buying this stuff. It's four or five hundred dollars a bottle. I'm not doing that, but I like. To, I want to smell it because I don't know what it smells like. Go down there, you know, and just walk through and see if they have. Sit down and let them make your face up. Put your lipstick on, you know, something like that. And that's that's what you do for yourself and and to, to do self care. If you like um, doing puzzles. Take your puzzle out in the backyard and sit on the tree and put your puzzle together. Do something like that. Self-care, mindless activity, something where someone does something for you. When you can just, it just makes your mind, uh, yes, I think about him really all the time. Just re relax my mind mm -hmm. to take him off of my off my mind just for a moment. doesn't mean I'm forget about him. It just means that his care for that long, you know, I don't have to do that. Now, I, I'm saying that's optimum because I can leave you for an hour and, and hopefully you don't get in trouble I'm going. You know how you do sometimes. <laughs> but <laughs> some people just, they don't have the option of leaving their care partner. Mm -hmm. They don't, they, they can't, you know. Uh, they have to make arrangements for somebody to come over and do this, somebody to come over and do that. Somebody and to be there. Yeah. Somebody to be there. And, you know, if you have family who will step up, and ask them to come if they would step up for 30 minutes. Uh, someone else come and leave them after 30 minutes. Most people, they don't do 30 minutes. But then I can come all the way over to your house just to sit for 30 minutes. Maybe they'll do an hour. You know, and then let somebody else come in and relieve them, and you might get two hours out of it. So, you know, do that and try to do that. Once a day would be great, but um, also our the lady in our class said that we should also engage in raucous laughter at least once a day. So that means you need to be funnier. <laughs> I'm tired of being funny. <laughs> you get your laugh in, you know. I don't have to do much to make you laugh. So uh, we have to do have a nice belly crunching laugh once a day. She said that gets your endorphins flowing. Well, when I'm out doing something, you, you could. I could what laugh? Yeah. Like when I go when I go shopping or when I go uh, to Sam's Club or 
when, whenever I do something by myself, doesn't that free you up for to do whatever you want to do? I could, yeah, I could do that. Mm -hmm. But a lot of times when I'm, I find myself doing what I'm just told everybody else to do, not to do, and that is don't be um, doing some work, doing some work like laundry, mm -hmm. stuff like that. Don't do that. Just don't do that. Mm -hmm. Don't do that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, the, uh, okay. I have, um, hold on. As Hampton's caregiver, my goal is to enhance his quality of life in a way to slow down, delay, and or prevent further debilitating symptoms, and above all, be his medical advocate with doctors, nurses, technicians, and any other medical personnel or social services. That's my job as Hampton's caregiver, mm. to be his advocate. Yes. Everybody needs one. Everybody needs one. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, I forgot, I, I wanted to, to tell you all this about um, an incident we had at the hospital this last time. And as you know, I keep a, a journal when I go. I write, in it, I write down all the, you know, the doctors that come in, what they say, stuff like that. And I'm also recording it on, on, on my, my phone. And, um, but I, I, I usually I write down everything so I can get access to it really quickly. And so. that she was called I was talking about her last week anyway mm -hmm. and so uh, yeah and so I was talking uh, to her and she's the one who comes in and check make sure everything's okay is there anything we haven't done can I you, you need anything you think anything you think we could have done better and stuff like that so like a customer service representative for nurses and doctors and so I proceeded I said, we did have a problem. The hamstrap said, what, what problem do we have? And I proceeded to whip out my journal, and I read it all because I was getting ready to tell the doctor when he showed up. But he never showed up. He must have known I was red hot and still heating. He never showed up. And so I told her. So she said, uh, well, did the doctor ever show up when you told him all this? I said, no, he never showed up. I said, that's another issue. When I asked this. Two people seeing the same thing, same room. I was there 24-7, but we had different um, uh, um, opinions. Po opinions, points of view mm -hmm. from what was going on in that room. But I was looking at it and looking out for him. And, and the reason he felt so taken care of and so respected was because behind the scenes, stuff that he didn't see, I was taken care of. And it was the same way when we were in, uh, this past summer, because Hank was talking about how good they treated him um, at the uh, care facility where he was and how good they treated him there. And I'm not talking about the hospital. I'm talking about at the, at real, the rehabilitation. rehabilitation. Yeah, and he's did. talking about how good they took care of him. I'm saying that he laid up there and they didn't give him, he didn't have any uh, rehab for the first three days. And they didn't, um, I had to um, tell them they need to feed him two days in a row. They didn't bring him anything to eat. And until I, I, I raised concerns about that, then I had somebody working oh, no, in the... Oh, no, they didn't give me my meal request. No, we... But they, they we, fed me. They no, fed the me. first day you got there, they didn't bring you up any food because they didn't know, they, they said they didn't know you were coming. They, they knew, they knew the day before you were coming. But anyway, they didn't, it was a weekend and they didn't have enough personnel. And so, but they ended up giving me something to eat because I raised concerns that didn't, he hadn't had anything to eat. And so, but it, it, you have to, you have to just do and ask. You can't be nice and you know, milk toast. They call them milk toast. You can't, oh, please, you know, and, you know, oh, you know. Who, who, who milk toast? That's what they call people when they just kind of acquiesce to, to anything going around. You know, but you know, you need, you're not supposed to be the one to have to do this. You need to be just what you were because right, they don't want the patient to be nasty because you don't want to have to deal I'm with a nasty patient. Nasty, no. But I can do that because I can go home and leave you there. So, <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> no, but I, I, I need to, I, you need to have a, a pit, a, a, as an advocate, you have to have a pit bull mentality, but you don't have to growl all the time. I don't have to bark and snap and bite. 
they just need to know that you have a pit bull on, uh, uh, behind you because you're walking with your pit bull. I might have to have a muzzle on sometime, but that's okay too. But I'm, I'm there to, uh, to fight for you. Okay, um, the um, final thing is I want to say is uh, we were talking before about um, uh, being gaslit, being ga uh, having doctors and personnel gaslight you. No doctor knows your care partner better than you. Your daily, weekly observations and, and um, data will prove invaluable to the doctors who treat your care partner's illness. Make sure you journal everything. You keep a record of it. Um, you have access to all their information. Make sure when they go into a hospital that you ask for the sign-in to access your care partner's uh, information. You can do that. They, all, they have it now that you can go in and see what the doctors put in. You can see the results of the test. Many times, if you're on it, you can see the results before the doctor even sees them because you have access to check to check it whenever you want to. He may be asleep or with another patient, and the, and the results of the test come up, and you can see what the results were. And you being ready, and that at that point, what you can do is get your questions ready when the doctor does come. Do not let them gaslight you. Study the illness that your your care partner has. Has. You should know as much as possible about your care partner's illness or illnesses. You, you must know, do that. If you don't know, Google it. <clears throat> Google it. Find some really um, uh, good, there are some wonderful sites online where you can find out information about um, your, your part. Go to the National Kidney Foundation. If they have um, a problem with the eyes, do the Ophthalmology Foundation. I don't know if that's one or not, but you get what I mean. You don't just go to Joe Schmo's eye doctor thing. Go to the foundations that support these um, illnesses mm -hmm. to find out um, some ongoing studies and things like that. Investigate um, current and possible uh, meds and, and how they can be used to treat your care partner. Also, check the side effects. And that is one thing I oh. did not do with the Ozempic. We, and I'm getting more now. and more to find out. And I think the Ozempic is what made Hampton have this last bout. I really, I'm, I'm scared that that may have happened. Because one of the side effects of that medication is uh, constipation and bowel blockage. Yep. Uh, speak up clearly and do not mumble when you talk with the doctor. That is no time to be wringing your hands and looking all sad. You need to, to suck it up, get yourself together, and, and say it loud and proud exactly what you'd like to know, what you want, what's the care plan. That's the magic word. What is the care plan? Don't let, let that doctor leave your presence without you knowing what's happening next. He needs to know what's happening. He may not have thought what's happening there because he got another patient in the hall. But you need to know. Uh, excuse me, Dr. So-and-so, Dr. Z, what is the care plan? Once you find out this, what's next? Okay, what, what's next? You want to know. And don't let them brush you off and gaslight like you. Well, we don't know about that. Well, you need to know. He should know. He should know. And you need to know. Um, ask uh, your uh, medical personnel to speak slowly spell terms and explain different terms and diagnoses. Don't let them keep talking that la that Latin jargon uh, jar and Greek jargon, you know, the medical terms. You need tell them spell it. I'm old. What, what what does that mean? Break it down so your grandma would understand. She 80 years old. Tell your grandma how she can understand that. And 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 don't be embarrassed to say that. I say that in a heartbeat. I use my age to my advantage. Uh we old, we both old. We you got to slow down. Don't talk so fast cuz you got these kids the, the, uh, these, the, these technicians are what uh, 20 years old 22 23 like and they talk fast the same way they type with their thumbs they talk the same way and they don't they say all the words together and I'm saying oh, you gotta slow down this is your grandma talk slow so your grandma can understand and they and they laugh and then they talk slower they really do and enunciate better um, write down your information write down in your the medical journal that you're keeping when they're in the hospital. And you should also have a behavioral journal as well. What's Ham's day-to-day -day, um, behavior? Have I, am I noticing anything different? Uh, am I noticing that it's, it's harder for him to breathe after he walks down uh, from the back of the RV to the front? Uh, am I noticing that he looks like he's losing his balance? Or is he mincing, um, mixing his words up and stuff like that? It, is his face look a little different? You know, is he not shining, his head not shining no more? All these things can be symptoms of something else, and you need to record that because if you're like me, you're not going to remember anything. You get in front of the doctor, and you have that amnesia that takes takes over. Uh, and uh, finally, the videos of your care partner's symptoms 
uh, would be invaluable. If you can take a, a video, you got your phone, you're looking at it anyway, take a picture of him, as, uh, a video of him walking down, down the steps, see, see how he's doing. Um, take a picture of him, show that maybe he's not using one arm as much as he used to use the other one, and things like that. <laughs> oh, shut up. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> You know, but you didn't get the idea. You know, video, you can, this is something you could actually show the doctor um, and help them to help you with, um, or help him uh, diagnose them. Okay, this that's it for the night. Um, the next week, um, the 18th of April, we're going to be going over care, caregiver stress. And, but there will be no live the following week, which is the 25th of April because we're going home. We're going home. We'll be on the road. Yeah, so we got two more weeks here and uh, we're going to start packing up stuff next week. Oh, good gracious. Imagine you had to pack up your house to move it down the street. That's what we have to do. Okay, our next live after next week will be May 2nd at 8.30 and it'll probably be broadcasted from the driveway of the Conway's home. Yeah, that's the right, that's way right we roll. So anyway, that's it for tonight, Kim Wasabi. Mm -hmm. Thank you I don't much. think if I was watching this tonight, I don't see I think anybody. Three people. Three people. Uh, three. Okay. All you right. If you move that, I will move down. I can see them. I don't see anything over there. Ooh, somebody over there. They're on your thing. You can see them on yours. I can't see them on mine. Okay. So anyway, that's it for tonight, and we thank you all for joining us tonight, and we'll see you next Thursday at 8:30 when the two runaway old folks talk to you about caregiver stress. Ham's not stressed. I am. You're not stressed? No. I am all the time. That's okay. Mm -hmm. Stress me, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, guys. Thank you so much. Thank God. you. Good night, everybody. Good night. We love you guys. Mm. Lord God, once again, we thank you. We pray, Father, we've been a blessing. In Jesus' name, we are praying. Amen. Amen. Good night, folks. Love you guys. Bye-bye.